Hello everybody, today we are going to talk about Spearman's Rank Correlation, which is a statistical test that we use, and it is brought up and connected directly to our intertidal zone lab, although it can be applied to many other things. So let's get started. Before we get too far along, let's talk about the difference between the null and the alternative hypothesis. Now a hypothesis, you know, right? It's the explanation of an observation that can be tested through experimentation. It's essentially what scientists do, right? We try to test our hypotheses, essentially trying to disprove them all of the time. When we look at things in the lens of statistics, we can break this down into two components, the null and the alternative hypothesis. Let's say you have two variables, two sets of data, x and y, all right? And these variables, x and y, we apply them to our hypotheses here. Now, the alternative hypothesis will state that there is a significant correlation between these two sets of variables, x and y, meaning when x does something, y is following or changing because of it. There is a correlation between the two, a given a poll or whatever the case may be. All right, that's the alternative hypothesis. The null hypothesis states that, no, the x variable and the y variable, they are not correlated at all. They are not related to each other. They all move independently of each other. That's the null hypothesis, meaning there's no real significance to their correlation at all. Now, let's make sure this makes a little bit more sense. Let's check this out in terms of the intertidal zone where we did our work. Now over on the right, you'll see there's our transect line going down the rock face, and we're gonna pay attention to the little litterina or periwinkles, uh, these little snails over there as well. Now you can look at the quadrat one through 10 and the summary data there. Uh, number of litterina snails versus the distance from the low tide mark. Now, our alternative hypothesis would be the hypothesis we came up with for the most part, which is there is a positive correlation between the height above the tide and the number of litterina snails. Now, the null hypothesis would state that there is no correlation between the height above the low tide and the number of litterina snails. Now, if you look at the data sets, you can tell that as the centimeters increase from 10 to 100, uh, centimeters, look at the number of litterina snails. Now this happens to be in our uh, 10 by 10 centimeter quadrat, so it's a very small number, but um, you can see how that uh, goes from basically less than one to over 100 per 10 centimeter square. So really just looking at that, we could probably state there's got to be a correlation, right? The alternative hypothesis must be right but you need to run a statistical test to give you that real precise um, yes or no. There's a correlation or there isn't, or there's a strong correlation or there's not, that kind of thing. That's what the Spearman's rank correlation is all about. So the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna assess the data using a scatter graph. So there, let's say you have that data, just like the data I just showed you in the previous slide about the litterina snails, now, if you were to run that in a scatter graph, you could get a, uh, well, one of the options that you see before you. Now, there are three various different types of relationships. You have a positive correlation, a negative correlation, or no association whatsoever. Now, the positive correlation would be as X increases, Y increases with it. And you can see the perfect positive on the far left there. They are all in a nice little row in a diagonal. Now the negative correlation would be as X increases, Y decreases. So there you have the opposite diagonal with the negative there in the middle, the red dot. And then the no correlation, obviously they are scattered everywhere as X does its thing, Y does its own thing, and they're not correlated in any way. We can put numbers to these things and correlations exist between negative one, which is a negative correlation, zero being no correlation, and positive one would be a positive correlation. Now, the closer you get to negative one and positive one, you the closer you are to the perfect positive and perfect negative correlation, uh, where they are essentially all in that lineup. And no correlation would be completely scattered, zero everywhere. So that's when they're all aligned right up on the trend line. 
but of course data is never that clean, right? There's also close to perfect alignment where there's a strong positive, but it's probably a little less than one, but still positive. That would be what you would see in the center now down below the strong positive correlation. It's not all directly on the line, but it definitely shows there's a positive correlation or there's a weak positive correlation that would be on the far right, where again, you can definitely see there's some sort of a positive correlation, but they're a little bit more scattered. So we're a little bit closer to the zero, not quite, not zero yet. You know, it's still positive. It might be 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, something like that, but it's weakly positive. Now you can do the same thing for negative correlations where you have a, you know, a perfect negative, a strong negative or a weak negative, depending on uh, what the data sets you get. If the scatter graph that we were just looking at suggests that there is a correlation, then you can use different types of correlation coefficient calculations to test the strength of the relationship between the distribution and abundance of a species or an abiotic or biotic factor. Now, there are a couple of these different types of correlations we can use. We are going to focus on the Spearman's rank correlation, which is commonly used in marine science to find if there is a correlation between two sets of variables when they are not normally distributed. And here you can see the uh, equation for the correlation that we're going to look at here in just a sec. Now, I know sometimes the equations like this can be a little bit uh, scary, but I'm going to tell you right now, it's really, really easy. Um, if you know how to add, subtract, multiply, divide, you are good to go for this. We're just going to break it down one piece at a time. Now, the Spearman's rank correlation coefficient is uh, represented by the uh, lowercase r with the sub s to it. Um, and it's determined uh, by calculating a few other variables. First, you have this kind of wonky e thing. Remember, that is a sum of symbol, and it's the sum of d squared. Now, d is the difference between each pair of ranked measurements, and obviously squared is just squaring that difference. Um, now, I know that doesn't make any sense to you yet, but it will once we start going into the process of calculating this. Now, sub n is the number of pairs of items in the sample. If you are doing a like five different transects, for example, or 10 different transects, you're going to have two different sets of data for either distance and the litorhinus nails, for example, that we just looked at, that would be your two. So for every quadrat on the transect, that would be one set. That's the idea. And again, this will make more sense when we get into a real world example. Spearman's rank correlation coefficient involves ranking the data for each of the variables and then assessing the difference between the ranks. It can be used when you have collected either quantitative data, which would be an example of distance from high tide, light intensity, number of animals, or percentage cover plants uh, in a particular quadrat, or qualitative data. So you can use it a lot of different ways. All of this will make much more sense if we actually go through a worked example. So here we go. A marine scientist collecting rocky shore data wants to find out if there is a relationship between the distribution and abundance of two species, aptly named species A and species B. Very creative, right? Now the scientist sampled 10 quadrats and collected the data shown in the following table. To test the strength of this correlation, we will calculate that lovely Spearman's rank correlation. So very much like our Litorina and distance uh, situation that we were talking about before, this is just a kind of generalized example. We have quadrat one through 10, we have variable one, which would be species A percent coverage, and variable two, which would be species B percent coverage. Now that's where we get into the sets of data. There's 10 sets of data, one per quadrat, with two variables per quadrat. Now, the first step is to draw a scatter graph. And so I plugged in the data into good old Google Sheets and had it do it for me. And here is the scatter graph. And if you look at this, it, it's very obvious that there seems to be a positive correlation of some sort. Now, if we were to have run this data and it was very much like chaos everywhere, very much like there's no correlation at all, then you probably like stop there and go, OK, we don't really need to do the math on this. It's just not working. But this is a, a strong enough positive correlation that it's worth running the Spearman's in rank correlation.
So here we are. To test that strength of the correlation, we're going to calculate the Spearman rank correlation. Now, much like when we ran the um, biodiversity indice earlier in the year, here we are going to use a table to break down and run the information and the numbers for this equation. The first thing we want to do is find the value for n. Now remember, n is the number of pairs. Well, in this particular instance, we have 10 quadrats with two variables each, and that's the pairs. So that would be an n of 10, one pair per quadrat. Now we're going to rank each data set for species A and species B. So in the table to the right, you'll see I have the quadrats in the purple on the top, then species A cover, 0, 1, 2, 10, 8, 9, 11, 7, 4, and 3. Now what I want to do is in that red shaded row, uh, I am going to rank those. Uh, the same thing is going to happen with species B cover, which is 0, 5, 14, 25, 28, 30, 40, 32, 20, and 8. Uh, in the red species rank row below that, I'm going to rank them. Here they are all ranked. Let's look at this a little closer. Species A percent coverage, if you look through the different quadrats, quadrat 7 had 11% coverage. That was the highest coverage that we had across all 10 quadrats, so it earned a rank of 1. So notice right below that in the red uh, row, I put number 1. The second highest was actually in quadrat 4, so it got a number 2 and so on and so forth. Same happened in species B percent coverage. The highest percent coverage for that was 40 in, oddly enough, quadrat 7 again, so it got a 1. The second most percent coverage was in quadrat 8, which is 32%, and that got a score of 2. So that's how we rank them. Step three, we are now going to calculate the difference in the rank, that D that we were talking about before, by subtracting the rank of species B from the rank of species A. For example, and here's where we get into this table thing to help us organize this, right? The first row under species B rank, that red row, the, the now kind of aquaish row, that's just D. That's where we're going to do the difference. So we're going to subtract species A rank, which is 10, from species B rank, which is 10. So 10 minus 10 equals, what is it, people? You are correct. It is 0. And then we do the same. Uh, for quadrat 2, we go the rank for species A was 9 minus the rank for B, which is 9, equals 0. But look what happens in quadrat 3. We have a species rank of 8 for A subtract that from 7 for B, and you get 1. Uh, now let's move on to quadrat 4. Species A rank is 2, and the species B rank is 5. 2 minus 5 equals negative 3. So this is what we do as we go along. Step 4 we simply take that D row that we've calculated by doing the differences and square it. This also happens to take care of our negative numbers too, so now everything's just a positive number or zero. Step five, you calculate the sum of the differences of D, summing all of the D squares up. All right, so you add zero plus zero plus one plus nine plus one plus zero plus zero plus nine plus zero plus one, and it adds up to a grand total of 21. So the sum of d squared is 21. Step six, now we can substitute the sum of d squared with 21 and solve for the Spearman's coefficient. So I drop that 21 in there. I also can drop uh, 10 in there for n because we know that that is the pairs. Um, so 10 cubed becomes 1,000 uh, minus 10. So you're, you get 990 there on the bottom. And then, of course, 6 times 21, you got 126. You divide that, and you end up getting 0 0.13. Now you're subtracting 1 minus 0 0.13, the way the equation's set up. That gives you a final coefficient of 0 0.87. So that is what we've solved. However, this is not the end. 
um, we have to test to see if this R coefficient is significant. And in order to do that, we used a published critical value table to compare our calculated value with published critical values. Now you can find these types of tables all over the place if you're in the statistical realm of things. And we are going to supply you with that in these particular problems so you don't have to worry about it. So the critical value is a value that in indicates when the calculated Spearman's rank is sufficient to suggest a correlation between the two sets of variables. Now, I will also add another layer of just sort of FYI. You can, with any of these sort of predicted uh, critical value tables, you can do various different percents. Um, this value table happens to be at 5%, which is written as 0 0.05. So there's a 5% probability that this is uh, not a correlation, which means it is a 95% probability that it is correlated. That's kind of how that breaks down. So uh, when we look at n, we have an n of 10, so we're going to look at 0 0.65. So we, because our calculated value, which is 0 0.87, is greater than 0 0.65, we can then conclude that the null hypothesis, which means that there's no correlation, can be rejected. That means we can reject the null and we're gonna accept the alternative hypothesis. The alternative hypothesis states that there is a correlation between species A and B on this particular rocky shore. And statistically, it is a pretty strong correlation. Um, we're talking somewhere in the neighborhood of 95% um, chance that there is a correlation between that. Um, so that is why we use statistics to do that. Now, a 5% probability is actually a, a pretty good in general. Um, now, when we are doing things like medical research and on pharmaceuticals and testing on people, we would not use that. We would actually go even farther to make sure it's like 99.9 some odd percent like good for us, not just 95%. So it all depends on what you're testing as to what um, critical value you're going, you know, probability you're going to use. But for most ecology work, uh, a 5% probability is just fine uh, for what we're doing. All right, I hope this helps you uh, understand Spearman's coefficient and Spearman's rank coefficient. And uh, of course, until next time, keep exploring.